hope you're well. So as you guys should know by now, music is a huge part of my life and obviously that usually comes from something. Obviously some people are innately drawn to music or have a talent for music and sometimes it is a, a nurture thing that you get a passion for it because of the people you grow up with and the people that you surround yourself with as a youngster, as a toddler, as a baby. Um, and obviously the stuff that infiltrates your ears during those years um, has an influence on your taste. Um, some of you will have parents or people that brought you up that had incredible taste in music and you fully embraced what they chose to put on. Some of you will have grown up with such awful music it kind of gave you that, that nudge, that push to go and seek out music for yourself that you enjoyed. Um, so I thought I'd talk about um, the tapes that would be in the car when I was a very little child. Um, my grandparents uh, lived um, about two hours away and every other weekend we'd go and see each of the grandparents. So as a little and that's quite a long time in the car, um, I used to hate car journeys as well. In those days there weren't CDs, there weren't mini discs, there weren't um, MP3s, anything like that. It was all on the old cassette tapes. So I wanted to root through all the drawers where we store stuff that we can't bear to throw away and find the tapes that I remember playing in the car all those years ago. Phil Collins. I know for a while some people look down on poor old Phil, but actually he made some cracking songs um, on his own and with, oh that's the post, thanks for interrupting, um, he made some great songs um, on his own and um, with Genesis and you can't remember that song he did for the Tarzan soundtrack either, Another Belter. Um, I seem to think there's a pattern, my parents seem to like people with slightly husky voices, you know there's voices that sound like they need to <clears throat> a bit, but I think Phil Collins is an absolute ledge. Maybe that's because of them, maybe because he genuinely is, I don't know. I mean, the fact that one of his songs was used on that advert says that it's iconic, doesn't it? Uh, the Pretenders. Now, I think Chrissy Hind is a pretty cool lady. I love the fact that she's kind of slightly androgynous, um, she's very tomboy, um, she's got that sh shaggy black hair, wears the leather pants, she's got attitude, she's got, she's strong, um, I love her voice as well. Don't get me wrong, that was the one I used to really love the most. And obviously I'll Stand By You is an absolute classic. I mean look at her, big shoulder pads, she's got it going on hasn't she? Any woman with a guitar is immediately a bit cooler as well. God I wish I could play, I've just got very crappy fingers. Okay, so Fleetwood Mac, Rumours, such an incredible album. They obviously played lots of shows recently. I was absolutely gutted I didn't get to go. Um, I mean, when you look down on, on the list of songs, Dreams, Go Your Own Way, I mean, so many hugely iconic tracks. And obviously you can see with stars like Florence and the Machine, there is no doubt that they've been influenced by Fleetwood Mac. There's so much history relating to the relationships in the band, um, Stevie Nicks just being such a, I don't know, a force of nature in terms of females in the music industry and just females in general, um, the style, just everything. So check out Fleetwood Mac if you haven't before, an incredible band. Eurythmics, another female um, singer, front woman, who was just completely iconic. She was so brave with her fashion choices. She had that short shaved hair that would be in all sorts of colours, yet she had this beautiful, stunning face. Um, so she had that kind of beauty juxtaposed with that strength and andro androgyny. Um, there's something about I know it has its detractors, but I love a lot of 80s music. I love this synth element. Um, I love the rhythms. Yeah, so this is the Sweet Dreams Are Made Of This. What tracks were on here? Actually, looking at it, this probably wouldn't be my favourite Eurythmics album, but you should ed educate yourself with the Eurythmics. You should educate yourself in terms of the 
that's hard to say. You should educate yourself in terms of the Eurythmics. They're another band that has undoubtedly had an impact on a lot of bands, particularly ones that use keyboards and synths and just embrace that kind of 80s, that 80s sensibility. And um, obviously she was a trailblazer in terms of female front women as well. Yeah, and obviously there's an interesting dynamic between her and Dave Stewart that makes for fascinating reading as well. Obviously, Dire Straits, uh, this, whenever I hear uh, Money For Nothing or any of their songs that have those such iconic riffs, I mean, it just takes me back to being in that car seat, feeling a bit sick and wanting to go to the toilet because I couldn't control my bladder at that age. Um, but I remember thinking, cool, that's a me too riff and just loving it. But it also kind of annoyed me at the same time. Do you ever have those bands that really like the tune is annoying but because it's so catchy you kind of love it at the same time die straights do that for me a little bit the hollies now i wouldn't be able to tell you many of these songs actually but the one that always stood out for me was he ain't heavy he's my brother and that song i, I don't know what it is about it but it makes me tear up quite a bit um it's mainly the verse um the road is long Oh, just, just thinking about the first line just gets me a little bit emotional. So that's another classic song. I'm guessing for a lot of you, you'll probably recognise the songs if you Google them, and do Google them or YouTube them, um, but you may not have known who the artist was, but they're all very classic songs that everyone should know about. I mean, I love that, look at that cover as well, of that woman with her leg out, like, she was doing it way before Angelina. Look at that sassy expression she's got as well. Go, go. God, as I'm holding these tapes, I really miss the feel of tapes. I don't know. Maybe it's probably just a nostalgia thing, but it's so nice, like, holding music rather than just scrolling through a list on iTunes. Whitney. Now, my dad was partial to, you know, the powerhouse vocalists. Um, when I was looking through the drawer, there was Mariah, there was um, Bette Midler. Uh, I still love a bit of Bette Midler. Um... Uh, who else was there? Bette Midler, Mariah, Whitney. The mind's gone back. What's on this album? So this little tape has got I Wanna Dance With Somebody. So emotional. Where Do Broken Hearts Go? I mean, they're some classics, aren't they? And yet again, look how young she is. Oh, it's awfully sad. But yeah, I know people that kind of decorate the notes and go ah, isn't for everyone but if you like power ballads if you like to do a lot of that sort of thing oh, and you know and just feel strong and empowered but emotional um then people like whitney are good for that so once again talking about strong females carly simon's greatest hits um so no nobody does it better and you're so vain. So all those classics are on here and she's she's got such an amazing voice and that smile. Um, they're kind of of that day, I guess, who they're very much like, oh yeah. They're like girl power for a different generation really, aren't they? There's a story relating to you're so vain that I remember being quite interesting. Um, it was kind of a dig at someone in particular, if I remember correctly. So Google that, because I think that was a really cool story. Alison Moyet, who, if, if you're into 80s music, you will know Alison Moyet. She's got such a unique voice. It's almost, it's almost quite mas. It almost sounds like a man doing a woman's voice. It's very um, rich and full, but deep. And what I like about Alison Moyet is she's not your typical um, female pop star. You know, she's she's fuller figured. Um, she didn't fit what was, you know, the the I don't know the stereo stereotypical look of that time. But she embraced who she was, and she let her voice do the talking, basically. And I have so much respect for that. Now, Queen Greatest Hits. I think actually I've got the proper cover for this in my bedroom. Now, Queen, I still think that they're probably one of the greatest bands of all time. Um, just like the um, 
just the catalogue of songs I've got is incredible. There was, there's not been a frontman as good as Freddie in my eyes ever, and it was going to be very hard to ever rival just what he had. He was flamboyant, he was theatrical, and he had the voice behind it to back it up. He had everything, and I think also he had that element of heartbreak you could see there was something going on on a deeper level maybe that's a hindsight thing because we know there was now or um whether it was always there i don't know but yeah incredible songs incredible rock and incredible pop um and i think bands could take a lot from them and they do i think it's so easy to see that a lot of bands have been inspired by queen I know Steve um, from Lost Alone will say how much that Queen's impacted. I'm sure bands like My Chemical Romance look at the theatre that, you know, Freddie Mercury incorporated and have used that to influence how, you know, theatrical their staging was. Um, yeah, so Queen. Who doesn't love Queen? Or who should you should love Queen? Sting. I've got a love and hate relationship with Sting. He's one of those guys that like I love the police I think the police is incredible but some of his um solo stuff for me has been a little bit too artsy fartsy a little bit too um dare I say self-indulgent that said I do like the husk to his voice and he has had some classic songs of course and that's why people like Eva Cassidy has you know covered them and why people like the sugar babes and craig david sampled his songs so very clever man but not all of his songs were my cup of tea now opera i hear a lot of people go opera oh boring or opera not my sort of thing and yet there are some songs that do nothing for me and i don't get any emotion from them or anything and then there are some that turn me into an absolute wet lettuce so I'd say don't all, don't ever dismiss a, a genre completely because if you like rock, you don't like every single rock band. So same with opera, you're going to probably find an artist within opera or a song at least in opera that you're going to like as well. And obviously Ness and Dorma by Pavarotti. I love because it reminds me of the football and I used to be obsessed with football because it was a theme tune to, was it the World Cup or, or was it? Yeah, I think so. Anyway, um... Yeah, so Pav Pavarotti was a legend. My dad would often listen to a lot of opera stuff. The original Evita, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber. This is from the stage show. So this was before the film was made with Madonna. But it's, it's an amazing um, theatre show in terms of the songs. I mean, there's um, On This Night of a Thousand Stars, um, Don't Cry For Me, Argentina, uh, I'd be surprisingly good for you, another suitcase in another hall, just so many good songs. And I think that was the beginning of my love of musical theatre. Um, I just love so many um, movie songs and scores and theatre stuff. I really want to go and see Les Mis after watching the film and realising that I thought it would be so horribly depressing that why would you want to go and see it at the theatre? But the songs are so good, so that's on my list. Now, this isn't it because I can't find it, but we have a Now 10. I don't know what it's up to now. It must be Now something, Now that's what I call music. I don't know, 5,000 a million or whatever. But we've got a Now 10, and on that Now 10 is a White Snake song, Is This Love, and Heart Alone. Um, if you like rock music, you should know these two songs. Absolute classic, um, I guess it's 80s, 80s tunes. Um, anthems whatever you want to call it if you don't know those songs you know check them out now i used to even when i was a little and i used to look forward to it coming to those songs on the tape um because in those days you couldn't just forward the track you had to listen to all the songs um and i couldn't wait when the white snake one and the heart one came on last but not least it's this motown chart busters album and this features the likes of Lionel Rich and Diana Ross, Michael Jackson, The Commodores, Stevie Wonder. Um, and I love this album. I mean, there's something about Motown music. I don't know, it does something for me. Um, it's feel good yet emotional. Um, there's great 
I don't know, the groups from the 60s were so good, like all the female groups, um, and you know, you had the Temptations, the Commodores, Vandellas, the Supremes, I mean, the bands were incredible back then, and the songs. So, for romance and just stories about love, I'd say Motown is a great kind of era. Um, and obviously it was the start of Michael Jackson. See, on this tape it's got Ben, which is the song he did for a film about a rat. Um, but it's a really beautiful song, and that was kind of before, you know, he was a solo artist in his own right. So, um, as you can see, I grew up with quite an array of different kind of music in the car. So this is just the tapes. I think in the next video I'm going to go through the records because... As I got older, I took an interest in the, the vinyl collection my parents had and wanted to find out more about them. And Obviously the vinyl collection is quite different to this actually. There's some crossover but there's a lot more um, kind of rock bands in there as well. Um, we look through them because they're just nice to look at for the artwork as well as just you know the songs and the history. So the next one will be concentrating on my parents' vinyl collection. I might see if I can get one of them in the video to just talk about some of them a bit as well. It's not going to happen. Anyway, I hope this has been interesting on some level for music fans out there. Let me know what songs you remember being in the car when you were a toddler or you know a five-year-old or whatever, and see if you, you know, when you hear it, it takes you back to that moment. Thanks for watching, bye.